First story. OP cancelled his daughter's 16th birthday, took her presents, and grounded her in favor of his golden child stepdaughter, who couldn't be happy even after she got what she asked for. I-42M have a 16-year-old biological daughter, Emma, with my ex-wife, Katie, and a stepdaughter, Sarah, with my fiancé, Zoe. Both I and Zoe have been dating for two years and moved in together in January. Zoe and Sarah moved 20 miles from their hometown, which isn't far, but it meant Sarah had to leave her friends behind. Emma and Sarah seemed to have a great relationship at the start, with Emma introducing Sarah to her friend group. In March, Sarah turned 16 and wanted to have a sleepover with her old friends, but she expressed that she didn't want Emma there. After a longer discussion, Sarah opened up about Emma being too much and how she kept pushing the sister thing, which at first Sarah went along with to keep the peace, but now it was making her extremely uncomfortable, and she wanted some distance. I understood, and I apologized for not noticing something earlier that night. I went over to Katie's home to speak to Sarah. Sarah was extremely upset and told Katie to return her birthday present. I tried to comfort Emma, but Katie told me to leave. Emma didn't come over that weekend, and when I collected her the week after, she barely spoke to me. Sarah tried to apologize, but Emma walked past her. Since then, she barely speaks to me and just flat out ignores Sarah, but she has a good relationship with Zoe. This Sunday is Emma's 16th birthday, and Katie is holding her a big sweet 16 party. Some of my family members are coming from out of town for it and the ones who aren't have sent gifts or money. My niece and Emma were chatting at breakfast about all the gifts she got and how great her party would be. I noticed Sarah looking upset, so when the girls left to get their nails done, Sarah broke down and said Emma has been isolating her since her birthday. Apparently, Emma told her friends to stop speaking to Sarah, and the few friends Sarah had ditched her so Emma would invite them to her party, which Sarah wasn't invited to. My niece kept rubbing in how Sarah barely got anything for her birthday compared to Emma which hurts Sarah because her dad's side doesn't acknowledge her and Zoe's family isn't well off. When Emma came back, I demanded she explain. Emma said her friends chose her when she explained why she wouldn't be speaking to Sarah anymore. And as for everyone else, she can't control what others do. She then said I couldn't be mad about Sarah not being invited. I lost it at Emma and said there would be no party. I will be taking all of her gifts, which she will have to earn back, and all her money will be donated to a charity for homeless teens. She will not be going to Disney with us in July. I wanted her to apologize to Sarah. And first thing Monday, I will be looking for a family therapist. She said I couldn't do that because they were her things, and her mother was holding the party. I told her to watch me. Emma locked herself into her room with some of her gifts and called her mother. Katie showed up at my house like a banshee, screaming about me playing white knight for someone else's kid while neglecting mine, and those gifts weren't mine to take. Katie ended up taking Emma with some of her gifts home and told me to stay away from Emma's party. Emma didn't speak to me, but told Sarah. You win. He's your dad now, but watch your back, B. Katie has blasted me on social media. And my family said they want me to give Emma the rest of her presents and money, or I will be cut off completely. Sarah is extremely upset and is blaming herself, which I told her wasn't her fault. It's Emma's for being a bully and Katie's for being an enabler. I tried contacting Emma. But her stepfather answered and told me she didn't want to talk to me. I've ruined her sweet 16th, and she'll never forgive me. Was I wrong for punishing her and not giving back her gifts? Comments. It's Nicolixo. So it's okay for Sarah to exclude Emma. But not for Emma to exclude Sarah? Frankly, I don't know why anyone is surprised that Emma's friends don't talk to Sarah anymore after she convinced you to exclude Emma from her own home so she could celebrate her birthday. Your ex is correct. You are white knighting for someone else's kid. Focus on your own child, instead of your relationship with someone else and their kid. Why T.A.? Edit. Also, why are you more concerned about how Sarah feels now than how Emma felt when she was effectively not welcome in her own home? OP Zoe was staying home with Sarah, even though Emma invited Zoe. I was never upset at Sarah not being invited to the party. It's how Emma went about it. Isolating Sarah at school and laughing when my niece was being cruel to Sarah about her lack of gifts from family. Disasterlo 3014. So Emma was supposed to be Sarah's boyfriend, after she didn't want her around for her party. Either Sarah wants to be friends, or she wants space. She can't have it both ways. You should be proud of your daughter for not letting people use her. She is standing up for herself, and not letting Sarah use her, and yes, she used her to have friends. At least your daughter has a backbone. And be honest.
This is about the golden child Sarah getting her feelings hurt. When she finds out the hard way, you can't use people when it's convent. Judgment YTA. Update. Three days later. Hello everyone. I thought I'd give you a small update on the situation. Emma's birthday party went ahead. I didn't attend, nor did we speak until today. Zoe took all Emma's gifts the night I made the post and told me Emma didn't deserve to be punished, but she does deserve an apology. Katie and her husband texted and called all Saturday and Sunday. I didn't answer. I just sent one text to Katie saying that Monday I'd reach out to Emma because I wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. Katie didn't like this, but I told her I wasn't arguing. Zoe and I talked all weekend about going forward. We decided to tell both girls about Zoe being pregnant today Monday, separately from how we talked about Sarah. What I didn't mention in my last post is that Sarah is on the autism spectrum along with other mental health issues, so making friends is extremely hard for her. That's why I was so hard on Emma because she knew and agreed to help her. My last post was never about not inviting Sarah to the party. It was just Emma's behavior towards Sarah that caused my reaction. We will be moving back to Zoe's hometown, which, as I said in the last post, is only 20 miles away, so there will be no issues with Emma's custody time. I think it will be better for everyone, and we decided to go to both individual and family therapy. Sarah is still upset and wants to apologize to Emma for causing trouble, but we told her to wait a few weeks before trying. She also needs to respect Emma's boundaries and give her space. Emma came over today. She didn't show much emotion when I asked her to speak about everything. She said she saw a sister in Sarah and went out of her way to welcome her. But Sarah couldn't even be honest with her, and she sent me to do her dirty work. So she couldn't even be bothered to fight with Sarah about it. So she just cut her off the only way she could. I said I understood about her friends choosing her over Sarah. But I didn't think it was right to let Sarah's new friends turn against her for a party invite. Emma said, she didn't tell anyone to do anything. They made their own choices. The same goes for my niece and it's not her responsibility to fight Sarah's battles. I asked her if she thought she should choose Sarah over her when I asked her to stay at her mom's the night of the sleepover. She told me she did, and it's going to take a lot to change the way she feels, but she's willing to give me another chance. I brought up Zoe's pregnancy, and Emma took a few minutes to process everything before giving an extremely mature answer, saying she's happy and hopes she'll finally get a sister Kate's has two sons with her husband. But at the same time, with everything that I did, she couldn't fully trust me not to choose my new family over her, which hurt, but I guess I deserved it. I apologized for everything and took accountability for my actions. I then spoke to Emma about the move, which upset her because she thought she'd see me less. But when I took her to the car, I bought her a birthday present with extra presents inside to make up for the weekend. Emma was extremely happy because, obviously, she can visit when she wants after she gets her license. We agreed to have dinner just me and her at her house every Friday. I told Sarah we needed to talk more, and if something is bothering her, tell me. She agreed, so it's a very early start, and baby steps hopefully in the right direction. Unfortunately, when Zoe came home, she told me Sarah didn't take the news well about the pregnancy and hasn't stopped crying since, so that's another issue to work on. But Zoe said Emma texted congratulations, as did Katie. I want to make some things clear before people assume. Emma's mom already knows about the car. I brought up the idea in January, and she was with me when I collected it from the dealer in mid-May. We won't be moving until at least late August. And yes, Emma will have her own room to decorate however she wants. Emma will come over this weekend. But she expressed that she still doesn't want to talk to Sarah. Zoe is seven weeks pregnant. Edit. I won't be commenting anymore, especially on the misogynistic comments towards a minor. But I'm going to post the messages from you threatening to harm Emma and Sarah. Emma just called me. She had been reading comments and told me to stop wasting my time, because these subs have a reputation for just hating on parents, especially step-parents and dads. I guess everyone is mad. No one got cut off, divorced, or arrested like in the usual stories on here. I guess no one was ready for a realistic outcome. Thanks to some of you for the advice, even the harsh advice. For those of you who just came to call me, Sarah, and Zoe, you need to leave the house once in a while. Bye Reddit. Comments. Star B Netter. I feel a lot of sympathy for Emma. None for you. It's not hard to see that you chose a favorite. And it isn't even your own kit. You and Sarah were both bullies to Emma. Trial and Derishach. Thank goodness Emma clearly has one parent who is helping her grow into a well-adjusted, thoughtful human. This is a deep scar in the making. OP seems to think this is a positive update.
But all I see is that Emma now knows she can't trust or rely on her father. And when he disappoints her, he'll try to distract her with a shiny thing so she gets over it. OP. I take full accountability for my actions. I was in the wrong, and I can't deny it. It did look like I favored Sarah over Emma, which I'm not even going to make excuses for because I can't. Emma knows about this post because I showed it to her, and she laughed at everyone's comments about dragging me. I messed up over the last few months with Emma. If it takes a lifetime, I'll try to make it up to her with both actions and words. 2022 WPWW OMG, you are really doubling down on being an ah. I was like, I'm going to read how you know you are DCK, that you reflected and decided that you have bad judgment and made bad decisions. But no. You made and continue to make so many mean, hurtful decisions. What an arse. You did favor a bully at your reunion. And you will always be remembered for being mean and nasty to your daughter. The family will look at the pictures. Where is father? Oh, he was bullying his daughter, laughing and being proud of the fact that he made his own daughter cry. Your ex tried to reason with you. And no, you still had to be the awe and do it your way. Zoe's daughter needs some help. She has issues that have nothing to do with being on the autism spectrum. She is a nasty and hurtful girl. And she even showed it with a new baby. She wanted to take you from your daughter. She shed those fake tears. I bet you knew that. Second story. Postpartum OP caught her husband cheating. So she acted like she loved him and made him fall in love with her. Only to dump him on April 1st. I have secured an apartment for my baby and me. And I have put everything in order and prepared for custody. Shared or otherwise. I have divided the money and transferred my share to a third account. And it will stay there until the divorce proceedings and the division of the assets. I found out that my husband was having an affair while I was postpartum. I thought that I would die because I love him. And it felt like my heart was broken into a million pieces. I knew that it was over. But my curiosity got the best of me. I wanted to know why. What was it she had that I didn't? Did he love her? I started reading his texts, and everything was there. He felt like he was alive again. He was happy and excited. She's single and childless, so she had all the time in the world to make him her priority. He felt seen and desired by her. I was confused because, even with life coming between us, he was always my love, and I made sure he knew that every day. Still, it wasn't enough. I read thousands upon thousands of messages between them and I started being everything he fantasized about. In the beginning, it felt weird, and he was confused, but I just went on. Every time he made plans with her, I found a way to make him stay, or I made sure that I sent him exhausted to her. The messages became less and less frequent, and the passion and excitement subsided. Soon, answering her became more of a chore. The complaining started, and he pulled away. He was happier at home, and he couldn't wait to come home. He started texting me again during the day. The sweetest texts about how he missed me. He was his old self again. One day, what I hoped and waited patiently for happened. He ended things with her. He told her that he loved me, and that now everything was great again. Her services weren't needed, in other words. I felt relief, and finally I could move on. Now I am preparing for my divorce. He will get the papers the day I leave for my new life in my new apartment. I know I will get a lot of hate for this, because I have neglected my husband and pushed him to seek solace in another woman's arms when I apparently could have given him what he sought all along, and believe me, I will bear the guilt for the rest of my life. In my defense, I didn't do it intentionally. Our lives had just been altered drastically, and I was trying to navigate this new and exciting existence. I was immersed in this new kind of happiness that I thought I was sharing with him, and I was trying to get to know my new body, which I couldn't recognize anymore. It was a really scary feeling, but he could have come to me with his hurt. He could have talked to me about his suffering. He could have tried to make me understand, but he chose not to. He decided to deceive me. Deceive us. He ruined our love, our future, and even our history. Nothing has been or will be the same again. Comments. Scrib 74. I just hope you took tons of screenshots of those texts. This isn't petty revenge, but nuclear revenge, and I, for one, ain't mad at you. Revenge is best served cold, and this is ice cold. All the best to you and your little one in your new life. I look forward to the update. Rabbit from Brazil. Cheating on your postpartum wife is so dirty that I can't even describe it. It's rubbish. Someone is despicable and capable of much worse things than cheating. Significant Cat 3. I'm commenting kind of early on. But I love how people so far are basically like, I love this for you, which is the same here. In all seriousness, it's hard to leave a partner with a new baby. 
and I know that preparing for and starting a divorce isn't exactly easy, and I'm glad you used that time wisely. He had no problem pretending everything was all good when he was cheating. Why should you not return the favor? He set the standard here. Update. Seven days later. Moving out on April 1st. Probably the cruelest April Fool I could play on my dear husband. He always loved April Fools. I feel a lot of guilt and guilt-related pain. I know what I am doing is so cruel, but I guess I will just keep going with my plans. There's no turning back now. Whenever I feel like I am the bad guy, I just remember their conversations. No, I am not the villain here. I will end the marriage, and I will tell him that it is because we aren't compatible anymore. Let him think whatever. I have decided that maybe I shouldn't tell him that I know about her. Let him run back to her once he realizes that I am really gone. When my baby is older, we can tell him that we got an amicable divorce. No hurt or hard feelings. Two people fell out of love. My boy doesn't need to know his dad broke up the family. It is okay if you hate me. Comments. Pat Dishuri. The joke is our marriage. This is just the punchline. That's a free one. You can have it. An old it guy. Why are you feeling guilty? He's the one who cheated and is reaping what he sowed. OP. Because I am bitterly plotting behind the scenes and won't give him a chance to apologize or explain. Bosgal 23. He didn't give you a heads up on his cheating, did he? OP. No, he didn't. Update. Two months later. I have left my husband and filed for divorce. I am starting to think that it's not so bad and that I will be all right. Well, hello, and sorry for being so absent. I know that I promised an update once I got out, but I have been so busy adjusting to my new life. I have received hundreds of emails. Have you moved out? And is there an update? DMs and comments. I hope everyone who asked sees this, because I have no possibility of answering each and every one. Also, I don't know how many times I am allowed to update here. Hopefully this is okay. I did exactly as I planned. I moved out after I left my husband's divorce papers. I told him that I wasn't in love with him anymore, and that I think we are better off as co-parents than as a couple. I have found a new place, and he could buy me out of our current home or sell the property once the divorce is finalized. He was in total shock but probably not the same shock I was in when I found out that he was cheating on me. He literally asked if I hit my head, and was even telling people that he was worried that I had a brain tumor. He was very angry in the beginning and wanted answers. No answer was good enough. Is there someone else? No, dear husband. There isn't someone else, but there isn't you either. The audacity of that man. I reminded him that we still had our son, and to think about him before acting vindictive. Sure enough, he kept it civil around our son. One thing he kept asking was why and how long ago I had stopped loving him. He didn't get any answers from me. Other than that, everything has been fine with me. I am adjusting well. I still miss him, but at the same time, I feel like I could finally breathe. I feel like I have been living on shallow breathing for the past few months, and now I can take full breaths. Our families are very sad and mostly shocked, but honestly, they have been very understanding. There's no bad reason for divorce. Wanting divorce is a good enough reason for them. To want to separate is to not want to be with your partner. My ex-in-laws are still very active in my son's life, and they have been very cordial, if a bit cold, towards me. That represented itself when, about two weeks ago, my mother-in-law, in a bit of a passive-aggressive tone, told me that my husband had started seeing someone. She apologized immediately and said that she just wanted me to know and be prepared that he had someone new, and yet I couldn't help but hear some vindication in her voice. I just answered, Oh, do you mean Karen? I gave the mistress this name for obvious reasons. She looked shocked and asked me, Do you know? Did he talk to you about it? I said, Oh no, but she isn't new. I told her that he has been sleeping with her since I just gave birth, maybe even before that. I kept my voice very quiet and monotone, like we were discussing the weather. I was already regretting my slip, but the news that he started seeing Karen again, while very much anticipated, still made my heart hurt. My mother and father-in-law just looked at each other. I don't know if they believed me, but then how would I have known about Karen when I have refused to see him in person since our breakup? So now everyone knows anyway, and I have learned that you can't keep these things to yourself indefinitely. Since he found out, he has been calling and apologizing every day. Why didn't you tell me? How much did I hurt you? He said that he loved me and never stopped loving me. He said that he was so sorry for everything, and that he would do anything to have me back as his wife. My mother-in-law apologized too even though she had no control over what her grown son did or does. It's not her fault. 
He writes that he loves me every night before bed. I hope this doesn't mean that he would make the divorce drag out, because then I have failed my plan. But he seems to be less forgiving of the divorce when he knew that he was the reason for it, than when he thought it was mine. Weird. The divorce is still processing. And if anything major happens, I will be here again if I haven't outstayed my welcome already. Ciao. Comments. Gnomes and blankets. I don't even think you should regret the slip. It's good that everyone knows what really happened. It's good he can't twist the story. And it's awesome that everyone now knows his new girlfriend is actually the woman who helped him ruin his marriage. He loves you so much, but didn't even grieve the marriage before dating her. Yay no. And you're way too nice to your ex, Mill. She purposely tried to hurt you by even mentioning it. She can eat SHT too. Unquantifiable life. I am not a mother. But I feel like there is a special pain in your former daughter-in-law telling you the boy you raised is a cheater and ran to his mistress to, legally, get with her the second he could. He's not coming back from that anytime soon. It may have been said in error, but I think the outcome is perfect. OP. Yeah, she was devastated. But nothing compared to his father. They are not on speaking terms yet. Loki Hobai. I would send these love messages to Karen. OP. I think being her is the worst punishment there is. Loki Hobai. Truly. Now that he knows you knew about her, he will always resent her in the back of his mind. And you will always be that one who got away. I wish you a smooth divorce and all the best. OP. They are not together anymore. It ended a couple of days after he got busted. Hopefully, he is single for a while or at least has the sense of not introducing a new partner until he is serious about the relationship. Third story. My self-centered Mill tried to humiliate me, but I turned the same joke on her, demolishing her ego. Now she demands I apologize, telling my wife I'm gross, and that's how she was shunned by her daughter too. Hello, sorry for the new account. I don't want this associated with my other account. Okay, so, my Mill. Or actually, I will start with my wife, Tara. Tara is lovely and wonderful. Tara also escaped from her little Midwestern hometown and ran to the coast, the absolute moment that she could, and I am pretty sure her mom took that personally. Her mom was born and raised in and around that small town. So, my mill. She is emotionally immature. Tara read that one book about immature adult parents, and she finally understood her family dynamic in a way she never had before. Mill is not a bad or evil person. She usually means very well but she's kind of, I don't know how to put it, self-centered. Like her first thought process. How do I feel about this new information? Tara and I bought a little starter home last year F interest rates, but we're hoping they come down and we can refinance. The place was too good to pass up, and her mill invited herself over last week. This is something that is extremely on brand for her, and we like to pick our battles in this family, so we just let her. Her mom who again is not terrible, just as bad emotional regulation and boundaries shows up, drops her stuff in the spare room, and just immediately starts giving herself the tour. Again, whatever. We actually hired a cleaner before she arrived so we wouldn't worry. It was annoying, but that's life. So she's wandering around and comes to our bedroom. I have a jumbo-sized tub of generic Vaseline next to my bed because I use a nose CPAP and my lips get chapped. So she picks it up and makes this really weird face and says, almost in a direct quote, well, I know what this is for. And I respond. Oh, that's for chapped lips. I don't jerk off with Vaseline. Apparently my timing was good because my wife laughed. But my mother-in-law did not laugh at all. Then, for the next three days, she kept asking me, Are you going to cross again? When I tried to make a normal conversation. I said over and over that she was the one who made the joke. And her response was always, Yeah, but that was a joke. Like what I said was totally serious. And I guess it was. I mean, I was telling the truth, but I was only bantering because she started it. I didn't even invite her into our bedroom. Anyway, she brought it up over text to Tara, and there is subtle pressure from her to just apologize. But I don't think I did anything wrong. Ada. Comments. Robospam. And TA. She was the one who first insinuated it was for SX. You just said it out loud. She's got a dirty mind. OP. So her argument is that it was innuendo and mine was just stating words out loud. I think this might be a cultural thing too. Maybe, I don't know, I have gotten into the doghouse in this family before for being too direct. And slacker kick. NTA, she tried to make you blush, but then got mad because you made her blush, which is what this basically boils down to. The next time she says something about it, I will just be like, OMG, how much do you think about this one comment? 
The fact that it seems to be at the absolute forefront of your mind is making me almost as uncomfortable as the original joke. Can we just bury this entire incident? OP. Yeah, I think I might have been more direct than she's used to. I am mostly worried about my wife, who gets to be the middle person here. She finds it harder to set boundaries with her mother. I would gladly tell my mill to just stop and go away if she wants to talk about it. Thank you for the context. And Mamble Pamble. And T.A. I read that book. My mom does this. She wants you uncomfortable, so she has the upper hand to step on your boundaries and make you feel dirty. She was going to weaponize your reaction that entire trip, if you had one, and bring up the tub of Vaseline to get a reaction at every chance she got. You took that power away, turned the tables, and didn't give her the reaction she wanted embarrassment. And now she's pissed because you embarrassed her. She can't take it. And she has no emotional power over the situation. Let her be pissy. F around and find out. OP. I mean, in context, she does this with Tara a lot. Which is why Tara up sticks at the first opportunity. When you put it that way, it seems really bad, though. Verdict. Not the arsehole. Update. I took the advice of a couple people in the original thread. And I talked to my wife about one. What happened while her mom was there and two. How we would manage similar situations going forward. I think the commenters were mostly right. And that my mill was using what I said as a cudgel to get the upper hand. I don't know how else to put that in conversations. We talked it out and agreed that we would let it go. But if she brought it up again, or if she tried something similar again, we would present a united front. And we would refuse to engage with her, I guess. Attention-seeking behavior. Again, I find this all weird and don't know how to really talk about it or phrase it. Well, you can probably guess what happened. She was on the phone with her mom, just catching up. And her mom brought up me being gross again. I wasn't on the call or anything, but I could hear her in the other room. For context, Tara finds it very hard to set boundaries with her mom because her mom will just not let some stuff go. She will just keep bringing it up and talking about how bad she felt or why she would do X or Y, etc. Honestly. I am so proud of her for what she did she hung the F up, she said. Mom, we're not going to talk about that anymore. And then, Mom, we're moving on. And then I just heard her phone get set down on the bedside table. I walked in to check, and she had this great little, defiant face on, like she was proud of herself too. I hope that the little rush she got from saying no to her mom is encouraging for her going forward. Thanks to the commenters, and thanks to the person who messaged me on TikTok about my post. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your fry.